Man does not look like he is going to have any answers today because uh, nobody. Oh! A heavy hand there and he knocks down our turn dealer. There swinging, swinging a foot there. He kept in there. Oh, and Audu Arugungu is down. Ebola has won this one predictably. Information is power. Everyone wants power. So feel powerful with the NTA News Mobile app, the one stop information center. Real news at your fingertip. Be the first to report by uploading first hand information on the U report link. And be the first to know by simply clicking on any of the links on the sidebar for headlines, domestic and foreign news, economy, security, politics, sports, and more. Stream live on your smartphone and tablets and stay connected. It's pretty easy. Simply download NTA News app from your Google Play Store and you're good to go. NTA News mobile app. Your access to real-time information. NTA, you can't be Dorich. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Thanks for joining us. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. President Mohamed Buhari has formally received the report on the review of the vertical revenue allocation formula for the country from the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission. The report recommends a reduction of 3.33% from the current federal government allocation, as well as an increase of 3.07% and 0.44% for states and local governments. 
the president said as an advocate for grassroots development, he remains committed to ensuring that all tiers of government are treated fairly, equally and justly, and the sharing of national resources. State House correspondent Adam Musambo completes the report. Last reviewed 27 years ago, the proposed revenue allocation formula had its leading philosophy guided by the need for distributive justice, equity and fairness as enshrined in the 1999 constitution as amended. The principles also took into cognizance the indivisibility of the country, public opinion and weighty constitutional responsibilities as well as functions of each of the three tiers of government. Your Excellency. It is with high sense of responsibility that I wish to inform you that after the application of the above analysis and considerations, the following new vertical revenue allocation formula emerged and are hereby advised. Federal government, 45.17%. State government, 29.79%. Local government, 21.04%. Special fund. Ecology, 1%. Stabilization, 0.5%. Development of natural resources, 1.3%. Federal capital territory, 1.2%. Total, 100%. The submission of this report today, Mr. President, aligns with your avowed commitment to ensure that basic fundamentals are strengthened for equitable and just allocation of resources to all tiers of government for sustainable development in our country. President Muhammad Buhari applauded members of the commission for their diligence in ensuring that the processes leading to the report was all inclusive. Ordinarily, I would have gone ahead to table this report before the National Assembly as a bill for enactment. However, since the review of the vertical revenue allocation formula is a function of the roles and the responsibilities of the different tiers of government, I will await the final outcome of the constitutional review process. Some of the proposed amendments in the constitutional review process, he said, have a bearing on the recommendations contained in the report, including establishing local government as a tier of government and the associated abrogation of the state and local government's joint account. Others include moving airports, fingerprints, identification, and criminal records from the exclusive to concurrent legislative list, as well as empowering the Revenue Mobilization Commission to enforce compliance with remittances of accruals into and disbursement of revenue from the Federation account. I want to assure you that the federal government will immediately subject this report to its internal review and approval processes while awaiting finalization of the efforts by the National Assembly. This strategy, rather than issuing an executive modification order, as was done in 1992, is more in line with our democratic tenets. Having followed keenly most of the discussions held in the geopolitical consultative process, President Buhari said one thing that struck him clearly was the agreement that a review of the nation's vertical revenue formula cannot and should not be done emotionally, sentimentally, or arbitrarily. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is in Meduguri on a one-day visit to witness a formal handing over of the Learning Center to the University of Meduguri donated by businessman Alhaji Mohammed Indimi. The Vice President was received at the Meduguri Air Force Base by the Borno State Governor, Professor Babagana Umara Zulum and Alhaji Mohammed Indimi, among other dignitaries. And President Mohamed Buhari has submitted to the House of Representatives the revised fiscal framework for the consideration to enable amendment of the 2022 Appropriation Act. In the communication read by the Speaker, Femi Bajabia Mila, the federal government seeks adjustments to some of the parameters in the budget. The projected oil price benchmark is contained in the request has been increased by $11 per barrel from $62 to $73 per barrel. 
The volume of the projected daily oil production output has been reduced to 1.6 million barrels per day as against the earlier projected volume of 1.8 trillion, 83, 1.83 million barrels. Other adjustments include an additional provision of 182.45 billion naira to cater for the needs of the Nigerian police force. There is also an increase of 3.5 trillion naira on estimated provisions for subsidy, taking the figure up from 442 billion to 4 trillion naira. The president explained that these adjustments to the 2022 Appropriation Act became necessary due to new developments in the global and domestic economies, such as spikes in the price of crude oil, aggravated by the Russia-Ukraine war. To 7.35 trillion, representing 3.99% of GDP. The incremental deficit will be financed by new borrowings from the domestic market. To all the matters now, the chief whip of the Senate, Senator Oji Uzokalu, has expressed displeasure over the attitude of some members of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC. A statement by the former Abu State Governor urged leaders of the APC to be fair to President Muhammadu Buhari and the party in their actions and utterances. On the crisis rocking the Abu State chapter of the party, Senator Kalu explained that there is an ongoing peace initiative as the party would come out stronger as one united entity. Nigerians should expect speedy and positive results from the 44 bills transmitted to the 36 state houses of assembly in the coming in the ongoing constitutional amendment process. This was from guest on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria who expressed hope that 24 out of the 36 state houses of assembly may likely vote in favor of the 44 bills. Thomas Ogbetere completes the report. Recently, the National Assembly voted on the 68 Constitution Amendments recommended by the Joint Senate and House of Representatives Special Ad Hoc Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution. Guest on Good Morning Nigeria while calling on the state legislatures to do the needful are of the opinion that Nigerians are expecting that the 44 transmitted to the state houses of assembly see the light of the day so that local governments state legislature and the judiciary arm of the states of the federation we no longer have to wait on state governors for funds the draft bills are transmitted to canvas house of assembly through the clerk of the house and soon after the receipts the house resolved to constitute an ad hoc committee under my chairmanship and we see the need what to do and how to get our answers back to the National Assembly. That we will do with all sense of responsibility. This is a very, very important period and a very critical uh, period uh, in determining the future of even the state assemblies and local governments. We do not engage in any public hearing again. What we do is look at them, the club will circulate them to all members of the State House of Assembly. Indeed, there's an ad hoc committee that handles it. There is no clear procedure in terms of maybe having um, a constitution amendment procedure act. In Abuja, Thomas Ugbeteri, NTA News. And Hingino is in our Lagos Network Center. She has the next set of reports. Hingino, you're on. Thank you, Hawa. The federal government and United Kingdom have unveiled online cybersecurity toolkits to help small and medium enterprises deal with cyber threats and sustain their business ventures on digital platforms for economic growth. Musa Toliat reports. My social media handle has been hacked before and it took my business like back to zero. 
Kajitan is one out of the more than 1 million SME operators open to cyber attacks in the country. SMEs in Nigeria, like other parts of the world, are exposed to several forms of cyber attacks, including phishing, malware, ransomware, insecure passwords, and insider threats. This SME forum, organized by the UK government's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and the Office of the National Security Advisor, is therefore geared towards introducing these SME operators to new cybersecurity toolkits, train them on the workability, and grant them access to use the tools to fortify their businesses at no cost. In Nigeria, SMEs contribute 48% of national GDP, account for 98% of businesses, and 84% of employment. But protecting SMEs from cyber harm is crucial for inclusive growth and for a prosperous, prosperous Nigeria. This partnership through the Digital Access Program covers some key objectives of national cybersecurity policy and strategy. That's our partnership with the UK government. The project designed to equip SMEs against the scourge of cyber attacks will be executed through the UK Digital Access Program and its technical partners. There's more vulnerability, so I think there will be more increased cyber attacks. So we're doing what we can to put the basic cyber security um, controls and measures in place to prevent the bulk of that. So what we have done with this toolkit is we've created, free, we've put together free tools that are vetted, which means they don't need to make a monetary investment in tools and technology. And then we're training their people, which also takes care of the people angle. There was a plenary session to share experiences with SME operators on cyber security consciousness. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. Lagos State House of Assembly has passed a bill to establish a training institute for law enforcement agents with a view to setting acceptable law enforcement standards in line with global best practices in Lagos. Musa Toliad once again has details. In recent times, the mode of law enforcement in several parts of the metropolis has left more to be desired. This is not unconnected with the use of brutal force to apprehend offenders while applying the law, and the resultant tension often leaves casualties in its trail. The passage of the bill to establish law enforcement training institute is informed by the need to ensure that law enforcement is carried out in a civil and polite manner across the states. I move that the bill for a law to establish Lagos State Enforcement Training Institutes provide for training and law enforcement officers and for connected purposes be read for the third time. I so move. Speaker, Bright Honorable Mudashim Obata directed the acting clerk to transmit a clean copy of the bill to the governor for his assent. A bill for a law to establish Lagos State Law Enforcement Training Institute provide for the training of law enforcement officers and for connected purposes to be passed into law. All in favor say aye. Those against nay, the eyes are. When established, the training institute is expected to train agents in line with their law enforcement mandate. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. Kaduna is our next pot of call after this break. But before then, remember that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. Buy Niger Registration and Telemarts in partnership with NTA Television Enterprises Limited. The Buy Niger Project presents International Market Access Platform. BuyNiger.com, a one-stop e-commerce portal and public procurement referral for exclusively made in Nigeria products and services. The Telemarts for buying and selling on television for company and product registration, participation, sponsorship, and adverts on Telemark. Call Acho on 080-9521-2547 or Sarah on 080-331-73233. Visit www buyniger.com or www.ntatve.com.ng for products inspection standards and quality assurance buy niger center the arena nta headquarters abuja fct buy niger market square mount view mall life camp abuja buy niger providing market access for entrepreneurs in the 36 states and the fct from local to global 
All the thrills and all the action on Nigeria's biggest dance reality show. Glow Battle of the Year is on NTA every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. As the world advances, Samuel Adeboyega University, Ogwa Edo State, is poised to deliver world-class education rooted in strong academic traditions. In the colleges of law, basic and applied sciences, humanities, management and social sciences, Samuel Adeboyega University is building the next generation of leaders. Hurry now for 2021-2022 undergraduate and postgraduate admissions into any of our NUC fully accredited programs. Secure admission today in one of the fastest growing private universities in Africa. Also note that the university runs diploma, Jupiter, part-time and tuition-free programs. For more information, visit www.sau.edu.ng or call 0705-079-1226. Samuel Adikboyega University to nurture for discipline and excellence. Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, VONS, cordially invite general public to the 16th Annual Ramadan Lecture. Topic, Social Media, Effect on Morality. Guest Speakers, Professor Ishak Olariwaju Oloyeti, Registrar, Joint Admission Matriculation Board, and Professor Ismail Shehu, Department of Political Science, ABU Zaria. Under the chairmanship, of architect Muhammad Namadi Sambu, GCON, former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Special guest of honor, Right Honorable Oladimeji Pankoli, former speaker, House of Representatives. Royal Father of the Day, His Highness Ambassador Ahmed Nubamali, Emir of Zazo. Chief Host, His Excellency Marlon Nasser Ahmed El Rufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Hosts, Marlon Yakub Ibn Muhammad, Director General NTA, Dr. Mansur Liman, Director General FRCN, and Osita Okechuku, Director General, Voice of Nigeria. Date, Saturday, 9th April 2022. Venue, Lumana Multipurpose Center, River Close, of Jabi Road East, Kaduna. Time, 9 a.m., Insha'Allah. Announcer, Organizing Committee. <laughs> This is nationwide, and you're welcome to Kaduna. Kano State Government will procure three boats to the people of Bagway local government and its environs as part of solutions to incessant cases of boat mishap in the area. Acting Governor Nasser Yusuf Gauna disclosed this during the launching of a new ferry boat donated by the National Inland Waterways Authority at Badal Village in Bagway local government area. Our Saliso has the details. Boat mishap in Bagway local government area is becoming a recurrent decimal. The recent incident in November last year claimed more than 40 lives and left many injured. Experts, however, attributed the problem to negligence from the part of operators and overloading. As part of efforts to avoid further occurrence, National Inland Waterways Authority procured one ferry boat and 36 life jackets for the people of the area. Acting Governor Nasser Yusuf Gawuna said, the state government will provide three more boats to make transportation easier from Bagway to Badaw and neighboring communities around Bagway Dam. The state government decided to deploy two vehicles to the communities in Badaw area through the state-owned transport company, Kano Line. The vehicles operated operates constantly and backward between Bado village and Bagwe town. He said the investigation committee set up by the state government is on course to unravel the circumstances leading to the sad incident as well as foretold further occurrence. In Kano, our Salisu, NTA News. 
away from Kanu Chijigawa. It is now many months after the signing into law of the Persons with Disability Bill as passed by the Jigawa State Assembly, but the condition of such people still leaves much to be desired, especially in assessing some building structure at ease. In this report, Ibrahim Bellu looks at the situation and how the laws is working in some aspects of their lives. Living with disability is one of the most challenging situations one can find himself, especially in developing society. Take, for instance, the accessibility to high structures. It poses a challenge owing to the fact that this group of people with special needs are hardly considered during planning and execution of projects such as roads, markets, schools, among other infrastructure facilities. Despite the legislation by the Jigar State House of Assembly for inclusion of people living with disability, and the remodeling of old ones to give access. Compliance is still not encouraging. All public structures and buildings within the law, there is a section talking about that, they have to be accessible. Because persons with disability, we find it very difficult to assess some particular structures. And we may have a better role to play where it's in that, but because of the barrier, that is the, the, the lack of access, has stopped us from exercising our uh, social and the other responsibility to our people. If we look around the banks, the ATMs and other public uh, places such as library and other public places are somehow so difficult for us to assess. While commending the legislators and the governor for the new law, they however renew their call on stakeholders to consider them more. As matters of right to life, association and interaction cannot be guaranteed without accessibility. We establish a good relationship with the uh, due process Beirut. I show us from now onward there is no contractor in Jigao State who will uh, hand over his work to government without ensuring that he installs all these facilities in the public structures. The persons with disability in Jigawa have a structure in the state that encourages self-reliance and discourages members against street begging. In Duse, Ibrahim Bello, NTA News. And that's completes our package from Kaduna. Before we go, you can follow this uh, news broadcast live on our website nta.ng slash live and on YouTube channel NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook NTA Network News, Twitter at NTA News Now and Instagram NTA Network News for updates. We now rejoin Hawa in Abuja for more stories on Nationwide. Stories on Thank you very much from Kaduna and back here in Abuja, the People's Democratic Party's National Reconciliation and Strategy Committee has submitted its final report to the National Working Committee advising that the conduct of rank of free primaries into various elective positions in 2023 general elections will further stabilize the party. Timothy Yusuf completes the report. This report. The chairman of the PDP National Reconciliation and Strategy Committee, Dr. Nicola Saraki, submitted a report to the party's national chairman, Yucha Ayu. Dr. Saraki emphasized that while so much has been done, there was still much to do, especially ahead of the 2023 general elections, advising the party leadership to at all times adhere to the principles of equity, good conscience, and inclusiveness. To ensure a thorough and extensive scrutiny process, in the selection of people who will be sent to go and conduct the primary election in the various states that will prepare for the 2023 election. Mr. Chairman, we cannot well emphasize on this issue because from our, from our exercise, we found out that this is, in most cases, where the problem starts in a lot of the state chapters that we have covered. There must be people who are fair and who are adhere strictly to democratic tenets. And sanctions should be meted out to those who you find they have gone to create crisis in the state by their action. Very soon, we shall be inviting all of the members of the committee and other party leaders to come with the former commissioning of the People's Democratic Institute. And we hope that that institute will help us in the next electoral campaign. The party's National Reconciliation and Strategy Committee was tasked with the mandate of identifying and resolving disputes at various levels of the party structure and reconciling aggrieved members to promote cohesion and strengthen the party structure. Timothy Yusuf, NT News.
Mexico Health Matters Now on the World Health Day celebrated every year to commemorate the anniversary of the founding of the World Health Organization, WHO, in 1948. The primary role of the WHO is to direct international health within the United Nations system and also to lead partners in the global health responses. Rosemary Bilal reports. Each World Health Day, a team is chosen that I light an area of priority concern for the WHO. This year, in the face of the COVID pandemic, a polluted planet, and an increasing incidence of diseases like cancer, asthma, and heart disease, the team is our planet, our health. Yeah, planet is playing a very important role in our health because you, you can say, okay, I just want to take out my body and I live, uh, but of course, the environment. It's uh, very, very important. You will be surprised that so many deaths are being caused by diseases that we can link to the environment. Air pollution, contaminated water, inadequate sanitation, including solid waste management, and negative impact of climate change, which are the individual, and not merely the absence of disease or illness or injury. Um, but this definition has also evolved adding five dimensions because it didn't cover the five dimensions of health. So this definition has also moved to include the five dimensions of health, which is physical, mental, social, spiritual, and the emotional well-being of an individual. The ability to understand their importance to your health. What does carbohydrate food give to your body? They give your body energy. They help you to regulate metabolic processes, especially those ones that you don't see, those ones that happen when you are sleeping, when the body is respirating, when you are breathing, when the, the circulation of blood. All of these things need our body to be resuscitated. One health day. Is celebrated annually, but each year draws attention to a specific health topic of concern to people all over the world. Rosemary Bilal, NTA News. Meanwhile, in response to the World Health Organization's recommendation on the use of uterotonics for the prevention of postpartum hemorrhage, a new medicine known as a heat stable cabetocene has been introduced in the Nigerian health sector. For places where oxytocin cannot be guaranteed, Elizabeth Omori reports that the new entrant aimed at reducing maternal death was applauded by the wife of the Niger State Governor, Dr. Amina Abubakar Bello. World Health Organization report on maternal deaths shows that Nigeria accounts for over 34% of global maternal mortality. The risk for a Nigerian woman is 1 in 22 compared to 1 in 4,900 in developed countries. This disturbing figure necessitated the intervention aimed at reducing maternal deaths in Kano, Lagos and Niger states. Over this journey, we spent the first year of the program uh, updating the necessary policies and now in the second year we are training health workers, we've gotten the drugs in and then working to make sure we start to use it in the facilities in a sustainable way. A lot of women don't have access to the proper oxytocin. So this is a very good strategy because we don't need to put them in the fridge, which means if women get that drug, then that PPH can be prevented. The new initiative encourages states to implement financial implications for the adoption and rollout of medicines to align with WHO's 2018 recommendation on preventing postpartum deaths. Particularly in the focus states of uh, Niger, Lagos and Kano, oh, we started with training of trainer for national trainers and we've been cascading to service providers. Players in the health sector recommend the strengthening of, of the community awareness for effective service delivery. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. For well, years, the European Union, Germany and other stakeholders have partnered to promote inclusive vocational education and training that meets the labour market demands in Nigeria. The group, more than ever, is focusing on sustainable agriculture and urban skills development through cashew production as a way of ending poverty and unemployment. Charles Alpha has the report. 
The agricultural sector is regarded as one of the largest employers of labor in Nigeria. And the cashew subsector, the second largest export commodity. And this Nigeria and its project. European partners are leveraging these opportunities to create more value addition and end unemployment and poverty through the creation of over 1,000 jobs for Nigeria within the period of implementation with cashew production as the focus. In Nigeria, the focal sectors chosen for support under the toolbox are sustainable energy, sustainable agriculture, sustainable infrastructure, which are of course relevant to uh, the development objectives of Nigeria. The road to training and sustainable job, one world without hunger and food security has been the major drive of this group, despite concern of peace and stable farm laws. The vegetable box partners with Glovo, which has the objective to professionalize the delivery service in the service sector and to offer riders the opportunity to learn core skills in the delivery as well as additional skills that are relevant in other markets. Both of these projects were tailor-made to the capacity building needs and developing opportunities of the private sector. So the project is opportunity and demand driven. Sector driving income growth at a very good and social security, generating employment and transforming Nigeria into a leading global food market. The Nigerian's transport and logistics sector, they say, is also one of the fastest growing industries in Nigeria, but with relative skills gap. To address and maximize the economic potential in this regard, stakeholders are professionalizing delivery and improve business skills of cashew farmers and factory workers and the GIZ in Nigeria. Charles Alpha, NTA News. Activities leading to the 2023 general elections should not truncate government policies, programs and projects aimed at lifting millions of Nigerians out of poverty. This is the position of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, and Secretaries to State Governments at the first quarter 2022 forum in Abuja, with the theme bureaucratic continuity during pre-election and transition periods. Mitairi Ikmen completes the report. This forum of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation with Secretaries to State Governments was instituted to share best practices and encourage peer review of governance processes at the national and sub-national levels. SGF boss Mustafa is frank with other top bureaucrats from the state that election years always throw up challenges of governance as well as sustainability of projects and programs of government at all levels. Hence the need to stay focused and committed, particularly to poverty alleviation programs. It is important that we remain proactive if we need our principles to succeed in delivering promises made to the people. And I'm pleading with the state government to please support us in uh, monitoring these programs. Other speakers are unanimous that governance should not be overshadowed by electioneering campaigns. By public service values, you are supposed to show political neutrality. You are also supposed to show impartiality. How do we keep the government flowing so that we finish stronger than we started and leave a stronger delta? And uh, it's not different from what I'm seeing here. It will be useful to have the offices of Secretary to the State Government to be the coordinating office for a lot of the federal government programs. The bureaucrats were also reminded to drive the process of expanding vaccination coverage in their respective states as the COVID-19 battle is not yet over. From the State House Conference Center, Abuja, Mitairi Ikwe, NTA News. To security matters now, some suspected criminal hideouts along the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, have been marked for demolition. Senior Special Assistant on Monitoring, Inspection and Enforcement to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Ikaru Atta, disclosed this when he led an enforcement team to the area. Onozi Yakubu tells us more. <laughs> The areas marked for demolition are Basanjua and Patan communities close to the main gate of the local wing of the Nandi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. 
the senior special assistant on monitoring, inspection, and enforcement, Iharuata, disclosed that all the shanties and illegal structures around the Basenji train station will be pulled down. According to him, the planned demolition is in continuation of the LCT minister directive to rid the nation's capital city of shanties serving as criminal hideouts in the territory. The worst part was in Basanjiwa, where the rail corridor had been badly encroached upon. And we cannot sit down, uh, watch, and just uh, fold our hands. It's, it's painful. It's touching here. And we tell the people that we have marked, they should all go. We'll come back to clean and clean very quickly. The tax team also marked for demolition some illegal structures in Karamajija and other shanties along Puji Township Road obstructing free flow of traffic. I think our Kujie own will do more of engagement. We have come to tell that these structures are illegal. We will be engaging with the council chairman, engaging with the uh, traditional rulers, engaging with some key stakeholders here. As part of our mandate, we have to organize and ensure orderliness, safety, and uh, convenience of all activities on space. Director Department of Development Control, Mukhtar Galadima, however, maintained that as one of the satellite towns in the FC, City, and with strategic location to the city center, Kuji must be given serious attention. Onozea NT News. Nigeria is strengthening ties with the financial sector, deepening Africa to support growth in the economy. Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Lamidu Yuguda, said this during a visit to the commission in Abuja. Bosede Abel reports that during the visit, both parties reviewed Nigeria's 10-year capital markets master plan. The master plan seeks to support the country's economic resilience, human resource transformation, information technology strategy post-COVID economic growth, as well as new economic challenges posed by the Russia-Ukraine war and its effects on African markets. You are doing so much you know, for, for our capital markets. And, and I think this is really, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's really well appreciated. And the good thing is that all those organizations that you are helping, yeah. I can tell you they are really getting stronger by the day. Okay. Yes, because we work very closely with CREP MF, okay. with SEC Ghana, yeah. you know, uh, and we connect them with our own local, you know, market infrastructures. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to recognize, you know, the courage of this organization for taking those decisions because it's really important to to do that this whole business about uh, having a vision um the culture change um having uh, sort of developing the idea of becoming a progressive regulator and embracing innovation and chine ye in our enugu network center is next in line with more reports good afternoon to you Good afternoon to you, Hawa. Welcome to Enugu Tiko, who graduated from the core basic course to uphold discipline and make safety of Nigerian roads their priority. He was speaking at the passing out parade of cadets of 2021 officers. Chika Ugu has the report. These 250 cadets from different states in the country were put through six months of thorough regimentation and educational training in various fields and certified worthy both in character and learning to become officers of the Federal Road Safety Corps. Call Marshal FRSC, Dr. Boboye Oyeyemi, noted that with the robust training and their display in parade, it is evident that they are ready to contribute their quota in ensuring safety on roads. He advised them to improve their competence by availing themselves for more training. I wish to assure Nigerians of the operational readiness and capacity of FRAC to work at its towards minimizing road traffic crashes on the nation highways. While preparing to be posted to various formations in the car, the officers expressed determination to discharge their duties with utmost responsibility. Academy, we lots of knowledge, ranging from how to be a patriotic um, citizen to being an officer with a difference. And with that knowledge, I expect um, and I also anticipate going into the field and also contributing my quarter towards making the road safer and towards improving the safety 
of Nigeria. High point of the event was the presentation of awards to the cadets who distinguished themselves in various fields. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. A one-year program tagged gender-based violence, sexual and reproductive health rights for women and girls with disabilities in Enugu State has commenced with a call on all to contribute their quota in creating a world where rights of people with disabilities are safeguarded. Again, Chika Ugu reports that various non-governmental organizations, civil societies, and other key players were present at the formal launch of the program. Research has shown that physically challenged women and girls have diseases as the result of sexual abuse. These physically challenged women and girls are sometimes deprived of medical care by health practitioners, while some hospital structures are constructed without putting accessibility of the physically challenged into consideration. Hence, this program by the Voice of Disability Initiative and National Democratic Institute. She goes for antenatal care. You see health practitioners avoiding her. They will say nasty things about her. Sister, why did you get pregnant with your disability? I can't handle you because I have never handled cases like this before. The event featured a technical workshop on Nigerian Disability Act, enacted in December 2019 by President Muhammad Buhari, which ensures the total well-being of people with disabilities. Persons with disability, almost one to ten of them, every time encounter violence. This is because they either cannot talk, walk, or cannot hear. So people use them in ways they cannot really express themselves. The one-year program is embedded with sensitization programs in communities on gender equality, evidence gathering and documentation of rights violation experienced by women with disabilities in Enugu. Chika Ugu, NTA News. And those are the stories from Enugu. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our Twitter handle at NTN News Now, our Facebook page at NTN Network News, and our YouTube channel at NTA Live. We'll take another break here. National World will continue with Fatima in Makudi after this break. Do stay. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Professor Umar Garba Dambata, Executive Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. We have unveiled the 622 as a toll free line through which consumers can be able to lodge their complaints. And we have provided introducer 112 as the national emergency number. This edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from technology, entertainment, economy, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up your copy and get abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Run a breast or cervical cancer service? Are you a private or public laboratory, clinic, or hospital that offer any of breast imaging, cervical cancer screening? 
HPV vaccination or other breast or cervical cancer services? Is your service a primary, secondary, or tertiary center located in any part of Nigeria, no matter how remotely located it is? If yes to any of these questions, then subscribe to the OCI Foundation. To subscribe, just type the Savvy Breast application form on Google or go to the OCI Foundation's page on www.ocifoundation.org and search for Savvy Breast application form. Complete the form and submit and let millions of Nigerians patronize you all for free. Become part of the OCI Foundation's quest to tackle breast and cervical cancers in Nigeria. And join us to rise by lifting us. And a warm welcome to Mark D. Barely two years into the construction of Kefi Akwanga Lafia Makudi Dual Carriageway, commuters are beginning to see the impact as most parts of the 221 kilometers road have been covered. This has drawn commendations from road users as well as residents thanking the federal government for the multi billion naira project. Correspondent Moses Ajau Ode, who visited some of the sites, reports that work on the road is progressing as scheduled. Road construction and rehabilitations are part of government's effort to bring development to the people. In its effort to ameliorate the sufferings of road users and improve the traffic situation on the road, that the Federal Executive Council approved the construction of 221 kilometers Kefi Akwanga, Lafi and Way to reduce travel time and open up communities. Work at the Makudi Lafi sections have continued to record meaningful progress as the asphalting has commenced, while artwork are ongoing in some sections. Some commuters along Makudi Lafia Road describe the work as a shared commitment of the federal government to build dividends of Walla due to the road construction, which is very smooth, we don't have electric insurance. Other road users, while commenting on their experiences in the past, observed that the early completion will improve travel time and boost business in the state. You can see the road is okay, just that the water, you see, it's giving us serious issue. They appeal to relevant agencies of government. The dualization of the Makudi Lafia Road will improve on the traffic flow on the road and enhance the infrastructure and aesthetics of the state. From Makudi Benue State, Moses Ajao Ode, NTA News. Thousands of Makudi residents have benefited from the free medical outreach organized by the Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck, as part of efforts to ensuring access to quality health care for rural dwellers. Correspondent Sandra Dowese Akema reports that it is in collaboration with other NGOs with leanings in Medicare. The three-day free medical outreach for Makudi residents organized by Hyperdeck is to provide access to medical services, especially where there is absence of healthcare facilities or non-functional primary healthcare centers. Thousands of people suffering from different ailments showed up at the St. Augustus Parish Demetri, RCM Primary School, Adaka, and Itra IDP Camp North Bank area of the state, where they received general consultancy and free medication. Other services received were hypertension and diabetes screening, malaria parasite testing and treatment, tuberculosis, hernia screening and surgery were necessary. I was diagnosed. After the diagnosis, they gave me one drug that almost finished what my, my, my problem. According to the organizers, the outreach is one of the humanitarian services targeted at giving back to the society. This commission is responsible for bringing succor to them in several ways to enable them to get all the needed equipment, drugs, and what have you. Between the first two days, we have seen close to a thousand uh, patients. We've all screened them for TB. We've also done the mobile TB screening exercise in the locations where we're doing this work. We chose these areas because of the incessant uh, crisis between the farmers and others. Uh, this crisis has driven our people from the hinterlands to these areas. And they are living mainly as quarters. 
and because they are sweaters, of course, they have limited access to health care. The free medical outreach targets 1,000 beneficiaries in the states. In Makudi, Sandra Doisi Akeme, MTA News. And that's it from Makudi Nationwide continues with Hawa in Abuja. Very well, Fatima. Thank you. Another feather has been added to the cap of the Nigerian Television Authority at a conference organized by the Defense Headquarters and Zakle Limited, which conferred an award on NTA's defense correspondent Ismail Musa and the NTA as an organization for professional handling of defense and security reports. Naja Tutijani completes the report. NTA's defense correspondent Ismail Musa bagging an award for professional reports in defense and security at this conference aimed at enhancing media military relations towards checking in security. Service to humanity has been recognized and leading to this award. I'd like to express my gratitude to NTA that have given me the platform. Ismail's role is part of a bigger picture which the NTA plays towards bridging the gap between the military and the media, dating back to 1977, when NTA was inaugurated by Decree 24 under the then military government. The media and the military are two critical institutions uh, that uh, guarantee national development and sustainment of democracy. We have a team of um, defense correspondents who have at every point given us on the spot report of what is happening on the field across the nation, not just in the Northeast. We are trying to bring the journalists to really understand the essence of getting adequate information and reported adequate reports. Other media organizations were also recognized for their roles with a call to promoting patriotism while handling sensitive security reports. Najatu Tijani. NTA News. Thanks, Nadatu. Even in security matters, you cannot beat NTA's reach. Sports Now with IODG, Mackinday. American college basketball player Nigeria's Ochai Agbaji's impressive performance.